Hello everyone. It is Friday, August 6, 2021. Of course, Wednesday was new comic book day, which means right now it's time for the new comic book video. It was not a real big week for books, but there were some really nice titles. And then Stray Dogs came out with their multiple releases for the different print runs. And so it, even though it wasn't a big week, it was still kind of a financial big week. For that, but we will jump right into the books. First one up from DC, Joker presents a puzzle box number one. Multiple covers on this one. I only picked up a couple of covers. Here's cover one. Here's a cover here. Another cover right there. And that was it for mainstream. No other Marvel, no other DC. I did not pick up uh, Immortal Hulk 49. Uh, just I just picked up a couple of things right now because I have to be real careful with my finances. And so this one came, this book came out a few weeks ago, I think, last week or the week before. This is from Scout Comics, Murder Hobo, Chaotic Neutral. Every time I see the, uh, I, every time I see Murder Hobo, it always makes me think of that low-budget B-movie, Hobo with a Shotgun with Rudger Hauer, which is kind of a campy movie, but it's a fun movie. If you haven't seen it, check that one out, Hobo with a Shotgun. Uh, next up, another homage cover. This came from a Blaze Comics for Porcelain Number no. One. Now I read the story for Porcelain Number no. One, and it was kind of an interesting, you know, story premise. So I'll give it another look. But this is, of course, the famous Joker Harley Quinn homage, right here where they're dancing. There's that right there. So I definitely had to pick one of those up, and this was selling pretty good right there. Uh, from Bad Idea Comics, Tankers Number no. Three. I enjoyed, I've enjoyed all three stories in this one here. The Tankers 1, 2, and 3. I read this one. I did enjoy this storyline right here. Uh, I will see where a bad idea goes. I think they kind of got hit a little bit uh, as it relates to the way they were trying to sell their books. So I don't see a lot of people picking those up. But the stories are actually pretty good. So uh, I'll keep buying them as I can get them. Uh, next up from Black Caravan. We Don't Kill Spiders, number one. Here is cover A. And then they, I think this was kind of like a secret uh, VCR style right here. Uh, pretty nice looking cover. I like the old VCR style comics, just kind of a, you know, trip down memory lane for me. If you all remember the old mom and pop VCR stores back in the 80s and early 90s. Uh, this had a couple of little spine ticks on it, but you know what? It's basically just a cover purchase, so I wasn't too worried about it. Uh, the Me You Love in the Dark from Image Comics number one. Another cover only, a homage cover swipe purchase. This is Not All Robots, number one. And of course, if you've seen the painting, American Gothic, uh, the old man, the farmer, and the wife standing in front of their home, he's got the pitchfork. Uh, this is what that's taken from right there. So I saw that and I thought, you know what? That's kind of cool. I'm just gonna pick that one up just to put away. Next up, Red Room, number three. Issue one sold really well. It was hot, uh, two and three didn't sell as you know as much or didn't have a lot of heat to it the stories are kind of hit and miss but it's, it's a fun read uh the one on this one though there was a ninja turtle number one a homage swipe for one of their covers and that's already selling for like 70 80 dollars and they sold very quickly so here's that there of course i couldn't get one of those i'm being very careful with my finances right now and then of course the big books this week was stray dogs the multiple print run releases. This is issue number one, fifth print, blank variant cover right there. And then you have the Dracula movie poster. These have been very popular, all the stray dogs, because they've come out with some really, really nice ones. Of course, my favorite is still the Evil Dead uh, homage swipe, uh, where the dog's getting pulled into the ground. I like that one, but this is uh, from Bram Stoker's Dracula, if you've ever seen the movie. Uh, I think it's got Keanu Reeves and uh, Anthony Hopkins in it. There's that there. Issue 5, second print. Issue 4, fourth print. Issue two, fourth print. 
And then finally, the last one, issue three, fourth print. I've heard hit and miss on this. People were kind of, you know, why would they release all the extra print runs for the different, you know, issues at the same time? I kind of like that premise. The book is hot right now, so they did the right thing because I know people are trying to put the set together. Uh, the movie cover homage set is really popular with collectors and it's really popular on the secondary market. So they just said, you know what, let's just put them all out right now. I think this is going to be the last of the runs, though. I don't think they're going to make any more uh, print runs for these. But there is another Stray Dog story coming out uh, very soon, which, again, we've talked about that on the channel, that even though it is a hot storyline, the first ones were, the first five issues, they're probably going to order real heavy on the second storyline because there's a lot of people who are going to want to, you know, try to jump on it. So the value of those books probably aren't going to be what people hope they are but if they do the multiple printings again the different print runs for the different issues there might be some value in some of those depending on uh, the amount of books that they actually print if they overprint it's a bad thing if they keep it real low print run like something's killing the children did uh, with a lot of their multiple printings then you have something that is going to have a long-term value so we will have to see and then finally with the stray dogs this i believe is a one in ten I was able to get this at a really good price, so I was happy with that. This is the Crow Homage right here, and this is already selling in the $35 to $50 range. So I was real happy to grab that one. Of course, we on this channel are big fans of Stray Dogs. It was one of the books that we had talked about before the release. So I'm happy to be able to get uh, you know, most of the covers that I wanted uh, during the entire print run, including a lot of the early first prints of issues uh, 1 and 2, because like I stated, that was something that I was really hot on. So there's that. And then a couple weeks ago, either last week or the week before, uh, the new Overstreet came. The new Overstreet price guide. Again, I wasn't able to pick it up, you know, uh, when it first came out. But I was able to pick one up. And then I still have one of the big, big books that I have to pick up uh, for that. Because I do like the bigger print runs as you get older. Like some of you might be in the same boat I am. You need a little bit larger print to be able to see things sometimes. So... There was that. And then, of course, uh, same thing. There's a lot of stories. But then I always like to look at all the Overstreet Advisors. And then the Overstreet Advisors are the same. You know, Heritage. Uh, they're from CGC. They're from CVCS now. A lot of the big-time dealers across the country are the Overstreet Advisors. But there has been a lot of change in pricing for a lot of books in this. So it looks like they finally, you know, put a little time to, to up some of the books on this. Let's take a look. Let's see if they have Something's Killing the Children in here. I don't know if they do. Again, I haven't had a chance to really look for all this. Uh, I'm just anxious to see. Something's Killing the Children. Issue number one, they have listed in high grade at $250 for the first print. Now, if you know anything about Something's Killing the Children, uh, issue number one, you're not going to get that book for $250 in high grade. And then, of course... Uh, issue number six, they don't even have any of the uh, variants listed on there or the multiple, excuse me, the different print runs for that, where that's where the real value is uh, in a lot of those earlier issues is the fact that a lot of those were really short printed. So again, when you look at the Overstreet, and a lot of people don't understand this, and I always try to, you know, tell people when I see them or when they ask me this question, Overstreet is a price guide. It is just a you know, a starting point in some of these books. Because if you look at a lot of shops, very few shops go by the Overstreet anymore. They do everything that whatever is hot online. They're doing eBay. They're doing, you know, any other online service that has graded books on there, which is okay. But then when you get people who sit there and say, well, you want $100 for it, but the Overstreet says it's $25 for it. We've always said, unfortunately, eBay is pretty much the going uh, Ray, uh, the, kind of the go-to guide for what a book is actually selling for. Because again, the price guy can say whatever it wants. Now that's something that Killing the Children is a good example of that because it said $250, not going to get it for $250. Of course, people say, well, the price guy was printed a long time ago. It is just a guide because a lot of shops all across the country and a lot of online places, if you try to buy, you know, Batman books or early Amazing Spider-Man books, you're not getting those for price guide. I'm sure some, some shops will give that to you at that, but for the most part, you're paying double, double book 
for some of those earlier stuff. And the higher the grade, the higher the price. That's always something that we've talked about as well. If you have high grade vintage or limited vintage, uh, you're gonna have to pay a premium for that. A good example of that is a lot of that pre-code EC stuff. You know, they have things in here that say that pre, it's $130, but you see them selling at shows and online at you know four, five, six times that amount, uh, even in low grade condition, simply because the book is so hard to find and it's so difficult to get in any grade, people are just willing to pay that price. So there was that. So again, remember, I always get the price guides because it's always nice if you go look at a collection to get an idea of what a book might be going for. And then you kind of go from there because so much stuff comes out right now, unless you have a photographic memory, which I do not have a photographic memory. I can barely remember what I had for breakfast. Uh, you're not gonna remember every first appearance, every, you know, whatever simply because you know life takes over and i just can't sit there and study comics all day i do know people that have shops that that's what they have to do uh, and one day when i hopefully have my own place i'll be doing the same thing but right now life takes over and you can't remember everything uh, so there is that and then finally we're going to show you you know i had a, a question from a viewer who said once you grade books what do you do with them well once you grade a book especially a vintage book. You just throw it in a box and it just sits there. Sometimes those books will move around. You move the boxes around. It's good to relook at some of those books that you've graded maybe two, three, four years ago, five years ago, just to take a look and just to verify the grade. Now, sometimes you might have undergraded a book if you've, you know, you saw something that actually wasn't there because sometimes, like I stated, if you're grading a lot of books back to back, you're going to get real tired or the book has moved or there's a new crease on it and maybe the book has gone down a half a grade. Maybe something that you graded a six is now a five, five or a five. Again, the most important thing like we've discussed, in order to have a good reputation and in order to be respected in the industry, you have to be honest with your collection. You have to be honest with your grading, something that a lot of collectors and a lot of online sellers do not do because they are trying to squeeze every penny out of that book. So again, the more honest you are, people will line up, people will buy your books. I have no problem selling books when I do the local shows here. Uh, and it's like that because people know that I'm honest and I'm accurate what I do, at what I do. So let's take a look at some of the books I have fixed uh, today and yesterday. Again, I only do a few books at a time because you get tired and you have a lot of other things you have to do. First one up, 1975, The Frankenstein Monster, number 17, the old robot cover. Created this in 9.0. Really nice there. Love these old 70s. We've talked about that. Again, no particular order. Just some books I grabbed out that I'm trying to... I'll pick a box and just go through the box and try to regrade things. Uh, next up, Doctor Strange, number 176 from 1969. I graded this a 7.5. Really nice looking color on that. And again, my grading's harder than, you know some people so they'll say oh that book looks so much better but again like i've stated before when you show books on on the computer or on the channel here and it's in mylar mylar can make the lowest graded book look a lot nicer than what it may actually be but these are very accurately graded and they do present very well even the lower grade books present very very well uh, next up from 1966 this is x-men number 26. this one has a small half inch split on the bottom here. They call it a spine split. This is graded a 4.5, uh, which in a 4.5, a half, up to an inch spine split is acceptable. But again, another book that presents very, very well, good color on that. Really nice book, you know, you've got everything, everything you want on an exciting book. Kid would see that book and be like, I want that book. Next up from 1969, this is X-Men number 52. This is an 8.0. This is the first full appearance of Eric the Red. It's also an origin story for the Beast. There's that right there. Really, really nice. Any earlier X-Men, even though the movies have been not the greatest, uh, early X-Men issues, anything, you know, pre-60 uh, issue sells really, really well. Anything pre-25, 30 to, you know, an earlier Sells really well in any condition, but this here is an 8.0. It's a strong book. Uh, first Eric the Red and Origin of the Beast. So you get a double. You get a first full appearance, 
and then you get an origin story. Next up from 1967, classic Romita cover from, uh, this is Amazing Spider-Man number 54, 7.5. Really nice looking color right there. Yellow's yellow, red's red, blue's blue. What more do you want in a good book like that? There it is right there. And again, this is one of the other books we've talked about. Anything early Amazing Spider-Man in, you know, upper mid-grade is going to get a little bit more premium price on that. And this is just a good example of that. This is a 7.5, so you're going to be paying a little bit of a premium on that. Next up, Brave and the Bold, number 50 from 1963. Uh, significance of this, this is the first Martian Manhunter crossover outside of Detective Comics. This is only a 4.0. Uh, it does have, you know, the typical issues with some of the spine right there. But again, it is the first crossover, uh, full crossover of Martian Manhunter. And a really nice looking green arrow right there. Just a really, really nice looking book. Again, another book that sells really, really well. Isn't priced real high, but you know what? Book like that, that even in low grade, that presents like that. Uh, Aquaman, number five from 1962. This is a nice Nick Cardi cover. Our friend Nick Cardi here on this channel. We love Nick Cardi. VG Plus right here. Really cool looking thing with the orcas coming down on Aquaman. And so you have that right there. Really cool. Really nice looking book. Again, lower grade, but presents very, very well. And then finally, we'll end it on a really, you know, just a funny note right here. This is from 1958. This is a 8.5. This says, Sad Sack and the Sarge, number six. And an 8.5. Significance of this book is it's a high-grade 50s book. And you know what? There is a big market for things like Sad Sack, Walt Disney, Things like that. Just a real fun book. But again, one of those books that you find in high grade and you fix it, you put it on a little, you know, Mylar, little Mylite. So when people ask the difference, like here is a book that's in Mylar. Or excuse me, this is this is a halfback with Mylite. Sorry about the glare. You can see the extra spacing on the sides here. This is three golden age, well, two golden age boards and a single golden age halfback uh, for three boards total again cost factor involved notes on the back of the book painters tape because if you have if you don't use painters tape on your vintage books because it peels real easy leaves no residue comes on and off real easy and you can buy i just have a big old tape of painters tape because it works really good because if you're doing shows and people want to open the bag or whatever and see the book it's just easier to use the painter's tape. comes off real easy. And then you have a regular Mylar. Again, there's the Mylite. Or there's, you know, Mylites and Halfback. And then very little spacing on the side for a regular book. And the reason you do it like that is simply cost factor. If a book is X amount of money, I try to put it in a nice Mylite uh, with a Halfback. It presents very well. So you get the stack right here. It just looks really nice. They present real well like that. So I enjoy that. And then of course, same thing for regular Mylar. For Mylar, it is three Silver Age boards. And that, except I think for, I think on the Sad Sack, since it wasn't a real expensive book, I think I just put three Golden Age books and a Mylite or Mylar, yeah, Mylite. So there was that. So there we go with that. Again, uh, new comp free comp book day is coming up in a couple of weeks. Of course, the big book to me is going to be House of Slaughter. Uh, but I think shops ordered tons of those House of Slaughter. So there's not going to be a big, uh, you know, uh, value in on that. But it is a prequel to the book House of Slaughter storyline or Enter the House of Slaughter storyline that's coming out very soon. I believe in October. And then uh, Stray Dogs has their prequel book uh, that didn't get released at regular free comic book day because of the pandemic. But it is, I've had a chance to see the book and read the book. It is just a prequel to uh, Stray Dogs number one, but still a nice addition uh, to the collection for those of you who enjoy the um, Stray Dogs storyline, which of course on this channel, we are fans of that. 
So that's what we have so far. That's what we have today. Again, I'm going to try to get uh, another video done with some video hot picks that I want to do. I just, I haven't had time. Uh, I wanted to get the video out though here. And again, if you're a subscriber to the channel, thank you very much. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, it means a lot to me. And then hit the bell so you know when the new videos come out. Right now, they're pretty consistently coming out on Friday. But I'm going to try to do a video as well on Wednesday. Uh, there's a possibility that my days off are going to change real soon. So <laughs> we'll keep our fingers crossed because it seems like something's always changing at my job. But hey, at least I'm working and that's what the important thing is. So there was that. So I hope you liked the books and I hope you liked the video. But as always, if you didn't, nothing I can do for you. Have a great, great day. Be safe and we'll see you real soon.